Modern file systems are quite different from what I've been talking about as the Unix System 5 is our canonical example of a traditional file system. There's one really big reason why, which you can see here. The difference from 1956, when the first disk drives were coming out, it's hard to compare prices across time, but these were things that were leased for you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars a month from IBM. So you had to be a very rich, wealthy company to be able to afford one. You had five megabytes in this whole thing. Um, compared to what everyone has in their laptop or desktop today, orders of terabytes. So that's an obvious thing that's different. What else do we want to do differently in a modern file system? What are properties that we desire about our file systems that Unix System 5, system that I've described so far, would not do well on? Larger files. OK, yes, yes. So the way that Unix System 5 handled files, files over 10 blocks to files over 40 kilobytes started to get slower to access. And you had some maximum file size that you can figure out what it is. I don't know offhand. But from the structure there, some maximum file size probably still orders of many megabytes, but too small for the kinds of files that we want to store today. What else? What are other things that we want a file system to do that that system is not doing? Yeah, Hunter. Journaling. Journaling. OK, what do you mean by that? You're talking about actually how to do it, not the desired property yet. And it sounds like the desired property is you want some more robustness to failure. You want it to be the case that if the disk fails, we don't lose all our data. And if you were Unix System 5 or file systems like that, Usually if the disk fails, you don't lose all your data. You get some things corrupted, right? So if there's a scratch on your disk, you didn't have an accelerometer and you dropped your hard drive or it dropped too quickly, scratch the disk and some of the blocks on your disk are bad. What condition do you expect your file system to be in after that? Yeah, OK. So it's going to be all corrupted. So here's your, your file system, and you get some scratch like that. So you've wiped out some blocks. Some blocks are gone now. Most of the blocks are still OK. What you do is you send your disk off to some company that can extract a lot of your data from it. And I learned this the hard way when I was a grad student, because I was supposed to be in charge of making backups and thought that was kind of a waste of time. And then one of our disks failed. And the way these companies work is you send your disk to them, and they extract the data, which takes them probably a few seconds. And then they try to figure out how much you're willing to pay for it, and they send you a quote back, and the first quote is always like, you know, $50,000 because they get some people that are really desperate and rich. And then if you say, and they say, oh, if you don't, you know, put you on the hook of say, if you don't pay that, then, you know, you don't get it back and or you're not going to get your data, we'll send you your disk back. Um, and then you negotiate and it gets down to a few hundred dollars, depending on how rich they think you are. But most of the files are still there. It's just, you probably can't read them. So if I know that contains the disk map, is corrupted, well, then you don't know the blocks that are part of your file. The, all the actual contents might be there, but you don't know where they are on the disk. And if your directory structure is broken because one of these was part of your directory tree, well, then you can't actually get to the, the file that you're looking for, even if it's inode and it's disk map are all perfectly OK. Are there any other things we would like a modern file system to provide that System 5 doesn't? Larger capacity, OK. So we both need larger files, and we need larger total disk space. And that might mean we need more than four bytes for an inode pointer, say. Right? We need to design things in a way that we can scale to having either larger blocks or more blocks without having too much overhead around that. So that's certainly an issue. What else? Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. So it might be on some very different kind of medium. And we will, if you. I saw, saw the title. We're going to talk about flash memory later today. And that's a very different kind of storage meeting than a hard drive. And that changes quite a bit about how you want to implement a file system. So I think we've got the big ones there. Part of robust to failure is not just that you can recover things, but that you know when there's been a failure. So the worst kind of failure for many kinds of systems is if the data on your drive gets silently corrupted, and you don't know. And you open your spreadsheet that's got your plan for the you know, next five years of your business. And some of the values have changed, but no one notices. Right. So that's sort of robust to failure. More precisely, it's integrity. We want to know that the values that we write on the disk are the ones that we read back. 